hi guys and uh, welcome to another video in today's video lesson we're going to be looking at euclidean geometry cyclic quadrilaterals parallel lines an exam question and we're going to be looking at the question that came out in the february march 2018 exam paper it reads as follows it says in the diagram pqrt is a cyclic quadrilateral in a circle that pt equals to tr and qr are produced to meet in S. TQ is drawn and SQP is equal to 70. Now there's our cyclic quadrilateral. P, Q, R and T. Now, we need to know the properties of a cyclic quadrilateral. Now the properties of a cyclic quadrilateral are as follows. So for a cyclic quadrilateral, we need to know that the opposite angles are supplementary, which means they add up to 180 degrees. We need to know that the exterior angle is equal to the interior opposite angle. And the last one that we will write down is that we will have converse angles in the same segment. Now, what that means is basically that any chord will subtend equal angles in a cyclic quad. So remember, to prove a cyclic quad, we need to prove one of these properties. It says here now that we must calculate with reason the size of T1. So let's look at that. So if you look at T1, you can clearly see that PT is extended to S, which makes T1 an exterior angle of the cyclic quad, PTRQ. And there's the interior opposite angle here, which is 70. So if we look at that very carefully, T1 is going to equal to this angle PQR, which is 70. So let's write that down. So 7.1, we are going to say that T1 is equal to P Q R and our reason there will be exterior angle of cyclic quad. And what is that equal to? 70 degrees. Now, always make it a habit to update your diagram every time you solve something. Because when you do that, remember that you'll be able to answer the following questions. All right? So basically, it is like going up a ladder. So we must make sure that we update our diagrams. Now, let's look at calculating the reason the size of Q1. So Q1, and if you look very carefully, Q1 and Q2 are subtended by equal chords, PT and TR, and we are given that here. So these are equal chords, and from our circle geometry theorems, remember that equal chords subtend equal angles at the circumference of the circle. So if Q1 and Q2, Q1 plus Q2 is equal to 70, therefore, these two angles are going to be equal and they'll be 35 degrees each. Let's write that down. So for 7.1.2, 7.1.2, you're going to say that Q1 equals to Q2 and our reason will be equal chords subtend equal angles. Therefore, we can now say that we are asked to find Q1. We can say that Q1 is going to equal to 70 degrees or 2, which is 35 degrees. And we've already updated our diagram. So Q1 is 35 and Q2 is also it is further given that PQ is parallel to TR. Calculate with reasons the size of T2. 
So now they're telling us that PQ is parallel to TR. So there's the symbol or sign for parallel lines. Now what do we know about parallel lines? Let's just write it down here very quickly. Remember that if two lines are parallel, that gives rise to the acronym FUN, our FUN angles. So what does this mean? It means that if two lines are parallel, we have corresponding, that will be co-interior, and that one will be alternate angles. So once again, if two lines are parallel, we'll have corresponding angles. So that one is corresponding. The U shape is co-interior, and the N or the Z shape is alternate angles. So that's what we need to look for. So it says calculate the size of T2. So if we look at T2, you can clearly see that T2 forms a Z or an N shape with Q1. So let's look at that. And there's the Z shape here. So therefore 35 degrees and T2 is going equal to 35 degrees. So we can write that down. So for 7.2.1, we are going to say that T2 is equal to Q1 is equal to 35 degrees. Reason will be alternate angles and when you are going to say alternate angles, you have to also state the pair of parallel lines. So PQ is parallel to TR. We've already updated our diagram. Let's look at the next question. It says prove that TR over TS equals to RQ over RS. Let's go look at that very carefully. So if we want to prove that TR over TS equals to RQ over RS, C. So there's TR over TS, so that would be TR there and TS here, okay, and RQ over RS. We have RQ over RS is there. Now, what do we notice? We are given that TR is equal to TP. Now, if you look at this particular triangle, which is PSQ, you will notice that we are given here that TR and PQ are both parallel. So what does this mean? It now means that we have a line which is parallel to the third side of the triangle. Remember our theorem that if we have a line which is parallel to the third side of the triangle, it divides sides in proportion. So therefore, remember this theorem, that if we have TR which is parallel to PQ, remember that if TR is parallel to PQ, it means that PT all over TS is going to equal to QR all over RS. And that is because we have a line which is parallel to the third side of the triangle, which is TR parallel to PQ, or we can say the prop theorem, or write down a pair of parallel lines. So let's now structure our solution. 7.2.2, we will write it as follows. So I would now say that PT over TS is equal to QR over RS. I would write down the pair of parallel lines which are given, which is PQ parallel to TR. I would also write down the prop theorem, or we can just simply say line parallel to third side of triangle. 
So we can choose one that you're comfortable with saying and say that. So I would normally say PQ parallel to TR prop here. Okay, but it's sufficient for us to just say PQ parallel to TR. Now, what was the second thing that I told you? Remember that we were given that TP and TR are both equal to each other. PT and TR are both equal to each other. So therefore, our next statement would now be that PT equals to TR and we'll write our given. Therefore, we can now conclude that TR over TS will equal equals to RQ all over RS. And that is our solution. TR over TS equals to RQ over RS. Let us, if you haven't subscribed already, do subscribe to JR Maths. You can also catch all the videos at jrmaths.com. Like my Facebook page, Justin Lazarus Mathematics. And I'll catch you in the next video.